Good. So for now, we are nearly finished. Now my car looks a little bit too lilac. This comes from some light parameters. It comes from my gamma. And let's do something about that. Just enhance our light intensity. But before we do that, we do something about the HDRI subdivisions. And this is rather crucial. When you crank this up to, let's say, 32. Now let's see what happens. The render time is a little bit longer but the color looks quite different and it tends to fade out a little bit. You can already see this in the light cache. It will it'll be brighter. So before you do anything about light intensity and you know that your light quality parameters are quite low at the moment, please be sure that the subdivisions are cranked up to 32, for example. This is something that works in my um, on my computer when you you can of course take 64 or 256 something like that and it's going to be much better and then i would like to change and slightly improve my global subdivision multiplier set it to 75 because this of course has a major impact on the subdivisions here too so we go back to the picture viewer and have this rendered again and as you can see of course the image quality is growing You can see slight differences between global subdivision multiplier 0.5 and 0.75, and especially with the global sub um, light subdivision 8. Right? Good. So, um, it's a little bit too dark, but we have not already, not yet, I'm sorry, we have not yet done something about the material. So, um, let's replace the white dummy material by this glossy material I already created. And I will show you in the material settings how the difference has been achieved. Now, um, I don't like to have the whole image rendered all the time. I'm doing some tests. I want to be sure about the car finish. So, now what I can do, I can um, have my interactive render mode. Now first of all, before I do anything like that, I save my file because some every once in a while V-Ray crashes when using the interactive renderer. I set this to a very low, low, low quality because I just don't need it actually. It's just for some quite other reason that I take the interactive renderer. And the other reason is that I now, after having a very, very ugly interactive rendering being done, oh, come on, I can switch to the render settings. And in V-Ray system, I can check regions on off and get last region render because he's taking the exact measures and position of this interactive render frame. Okay, so now when I Go back to my picture view. I have this image rendered. I'll only see my car rendered. And it's all about the car now, so I just, <clears throat> you know, don't waste too much time with having the background image rendered. So what you can see now, the difference is that you have reflections on the car. Okay? And these reflections, of course, make the car look brighter. As you can see, this is only diffuse, and this is together with speculus and reflections. And now what we have is a white car crossing a street, lit by artificial light and lots of colors, and thus getting tints of these colors. So it's not really white, it's just reflecting colors. So this is nearly the end result. Of course, the render settings should be a little bit more you know, detailed, but this is um, basically our aim. And I will show you now how the material is set up to have those reflections and speculus. 
Okay, so have a look. Let's have a look at the material settings. I what I do always I use a diffuse layer, of course, and I use one or two specular layers. Nearly always I always use, uh, also use a bump, and nearly always I use more than two specular layers. But in this case, I just wanted to stick to some rather primitive set of uh, effects because normally cars are not completely new, they are sl uh, slightly, you know, dirty. They have some spots with it, uh, which don't reflect that much than the rest of the car and so on. But in this case I wanted to keep it simple. It's just because to show you the very basics of um, building up speculars. Diffuse layer is the color, yeah? And the color is set to just 95% white. This is all. And then, as you can see, uh, the first specular layer for me always is specular layer 5, and then I use 4, 3, 2, or 1, respectively, when I need them. This is what Stefan Laub in Vienna told me. I think I remember it correctly. And so, first of all, let's look at the specular layer 5. I switch specular layer 4 off. And what you can see in specular layer 5, first of all, I choose the specular type Fong. You can see quite different results when using Lin or Fong or Ward. So, or whatever you like, um, I just tried out and I thought that Fong is quite good. The specular color is just white in this case. White means that the reflection is just maximal, um, dependent on the settings down there. So, when you have white, you have reflections. When it, this is black, you don't have you don't have reflections. So, this is one first situation where you might want to would put a grayscale map or something, but in this case I didn't want to. As I said, this is a simple setup, okay? So I close this. This is um, of no use for me because I'm using the layer fre Fresnel. So you might know that um, using the layer Fresnel is doing it physically correct, and in this case the specular layer transparency is just grayed out, you can't do anything, okay? So now, what I want to have in my base specular channel is no, no reflections. I'm just having a sort of base layer, just like in Photoshop, giving me the overall specular effect of the material. So this is why I switch off reflections in this base layer. This is what I do, actually. You can do it, of course, in a different way, but this is how I do it. Stray specular, and this is um, just checked. I leave the global adjustment subdivisions to 8 at the moment. And what I do then, I go to the layer Fresnel, and as you might know, there are different values for different um, materials. And something like lacquer and plastic and stuff like that is in a range from, let's say, 3 to 6 or something. So I decided for 6 and leave the black and white for the reflectance 90 degrees and 0 degrees by black and white. Um, I tried this out, so when you change this to white too, you will see no speculars at all, because this is maximum specular, this is minimum specular. right? So this is basically what the whole Fresnel and IORR is about, how reflections um, change um, along your angle of view. So different materials have just different um, ways of how um, the reflections differ between a 90 degree view or a 0 degree view. So when you change the IOR values, the materi material looks quite different. So I decided for 6. This is black, this is white. This is default actually. So 6 is not default, I choose 6. I switched the uh, specular layer for off, so we have only the specular layer 5, and I will show you how this looks. Of course, you don't see any mirroring things from the surrounding scenery, that is in this case from the HDR light. And as you can see, this is what it looks, okay? It's more or less um, white parts and more or less pink parts and um, the overall way how it's resembled is dependent on this Fresnel. Okay, so this is different to the um, second specular channel, switched on to, that was in the image before, 
and this is only diffuse. So the main um, difference is between diffuse and specular. Okay. So this is the first layer. The second layer is my specular four and a switch five off just for demonstration. I used Fong two. Specular color is white two. Of course, again you can do a lot of game gaming around here to just you know give it a little bit more complex and realistic look. But I didn't bother with that now. So this is specular layer transparency is inactive again. And now I have um, trace reflections and trace specular. I could switch this off actually, but uh, I just wanted to add some some more complexity by having some uh, more specularity on it. And this is uh, crucial, the reflections. And it's set to 1, actually. So this is a complete mirror. But um, as I'm using the layer Fresnel again, and I'm using a low IOR value, these reflections are not that um, dominating. Okay, So this is what comes by default, actually. And I just tried this and it worked out all right. This is black again, this is white again. You can soften the reflectance effect by giving this a gray, dark gray, light gray, whatever you want. You can also, you know, <coughs> uh, tune the reflectiveness by enhancing or lowering the IOR value, but just keep it like, keep it like that, okay? So this is reflection glossiness is one, and highlight glossiness is uh, set to 0 0.9. The default value is have a look on this uh, image now. Default value is 0 0.5 and actually there's much more specularity when it's 0 0.5. So using 0 0.5 as a starting point you can reduce the specularity by enhancing the value and also by lowering the value you see some different look. So it depends on what you want. We're leaving physical correctness at this place, I assume, at least um, I'm using these values statistically. So what do I like? What, I, what, what do I want to see? So I just wanted to see very little specularity and very narrow uh, reflective uh, lights. Okay, So this is why I put it like that. So the result is without the base specular layer. Now we see only reflections and very little specular. Let's see how this looks. You see, mirroring images, something. And as you can see, the HDR light uh, light's quality is not that important because um, at least the imagery itself, because nobody ever will recognize what is mirrored here. Okay, so this is the reflections. This was only specular, no reflections. This is uh, reflections and some sort of specularity. Okay, and this is diffuse. This is it. Um, I just wanted to show you how my specular channels are built up. Of course you can do really really much more things, many more things inside those specular channels. And as you might know from my materials I I'm, I'm, have uploaded to the V-Ray for Cinema for the official materials side, I'm using um, specular channels always because there's no material outside that is not reflecting light. So you can use those channels quite a bit to achieve realistic results. Okay, so I'm done with this, I think. I tried and played around with a reflection on the floor. I could talk about that because I tried hard and it worked out in a way because of course you uh, can't give the plane a reflective material and via this matte surface you can fade it out like I'm doing this here and you see the specularity. You can see the car reflecting on this plane but what you always uh, also see is the HDR reflecting and this is quite annoying and you can't switch that off so you have to do a lot of tricks to confine the mirroring area to the part where the car stands so not too much of the sky from the HDR is reflecting in the floor. So basically it works, practically it's, be a, it's a big workaround 
that's necessary. And I'm looking forward to the new version of VR for Cinema 4D because it seems that you can um, connect reflectivity, so you can tell materials that they don't reflect certain objects. So in this case, you would tell the material it does not, it must not reflect the sky, not the HDRI, and then everything would be perfect. So instead of showing you this workaround, I would just like to keep it with this. And let's all wait, hopefully, that in V-Ray for Cinema 4D 1.5 this is implemented. For a last thing, I would like to show you how I... Um, oh, uh, I forgot something not really important, but when you want to change the light on the um, on the car, as you could see, it's a little bit pink. This is something I would really like to show you because I'm, I talked about this actually. So it's pink, and um, as I said, the white balance of the camera is rather um, important for the kind of color you see on this um, on this white surface because actually it is white. So what you can do, you can change the white balance preset. Okay, and what you have to do, you go to custom. And basically what you do, you want to remove this pinkness. You have to um, choose a pink instead of white, because then V-Ray tries to put these, the special pink value that you enter here, into white. And you can just try to, you know, find the right one. 10, 15, 100 I choose. Okay, I have some pink value, and this is my white balance preset now, a custom value, and now I have this branded. And as you can see, the pink is turning to white, a little bit whiter. Now you can see this. The reflection map changes a little bit too. You see the difference? It's becoming whiter. And this is something that you can fine-tune your image with. Okay? And the other thing was you can also, you know, there are also always a lot of things that just make you not stop working and to work on and on and on and improving your image hours and hours and, and forgetting all about your family and friends. And of course you can choose the filter and give it a reddish tint too, as I did in the background image. You could uh, crank up the saturation, but it's colorful enough, so I won't do this. And you can also um, play around with the gamma again. This is all about the shadow image, as I told you before. Okay. Now for the final render settings. Um, as I showed you, I would like to call this um, low res. Try to work in a, in a certain way of structure. And as you could see, we implemented an environment image. So when I have a new render set <coughs> with the higher settings for, for a final image, I just don't want to repeat implementing this, um, this filter and, and, and image again. So what I do, I just um, make a child of my low-res and call this high-res. Okay? And now what I do, I just... Um, change all these crucial values, for example one, and perhaps you need more uh, a lower noise threshold. Uh, the indirect Ill elimination should be very very fast for big print size, but for example ultra fast very good, or something else, you just uh, choose whatever you want. Color mapping, if you want to have a 32-bit 30 30 output, you can uh, choose uh, in the save mode, you choose 32-bit. Um, you go to Vera Bridge again to color mapping and check adaptation only. That means um, your Photoshop image will not be will be in the correct gamma value, and it's only that it looks right. Yeah, it's uh, normally it's a little bit darker, and you can play around with the um, exposure settings in Photoshop. And this just makes it look right. Okay, this is not my idea, this is from uh, Stefan Laub, from his official tutorial. So please be sure to check his official tutorials, because of, uh, of course this is the essential information you can get to concerning V-Ray for Cinema 4D. What I would like to do 
um, is just as a last thing to have this Reinhardt um, type for color mapping reduce the burn value to 0 0.8 because in my picture view this contrast is a little bit too high I thought I think and then I set the area light slightness to let's say 1.5 and then I have this rendered and it should then look like this one. So this was it. This was on um, backplate compositing in V-Ray for Cinema 4D. It was about HDRI lighting again. It was about tuning the HDR light. It was about implementing a background backplate image and how to handle it. And it was about uh, removing a shadow catching plane that you need via the compositing tag. And uh, I was talking about some special aspects of uh, speculars and reflections in a material. That was it. I hope you liked it and see you next time. Bye.